start recording. Welcome to Ball and Chain Podcast. This is episode 173. I'm Mox Born again. I have with me, it's my angel. Hello. Hello, how are you? Doing good? In there. So we've got our overlays working. We've got the camera reset, although it's a little close than I'd like it. So I think uh, we'll get that squared away next week. And then um, we will uh, go from there. But uh, in order to do that, I need to move my entire desk that way, like two feet. Um, really? Really what? This thing weighs like 300 pounds. <laughs> That's why I need help. <laughs> Luckily, the ground is concrete. and We can slide it or just pick it up and set it just down. Or we can leave it as is, but you know. Uh, you know. You know how it is. Um, so we got a pretty quick show for you. Uh, no top five this week, but we do have a whole bunch of discussion stuff that we want to, discussion topics we want to talk about or that I came up with that I want to talk about. <laughs> I even picked out ones that, uh, one that you will enjoy. We're going to talk about the cast members that were released uh, for Quantum Break. Which wasn't that supposed to come out forever ago. Yeah, but they st- they're still cooking it, and I I have faith. I have faith. The remedy has has rekindled my because originally when they announced us, I was super excited. We'll get into it. We'll we'll get into it when we get to that por- portion of the show. Um, but uh, let's t- quickly talk about the games that we are the short 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 list of games we are playing, um, and that pretty much includes Minecraft. Which Eli, you know, Eli is so excited to play Minecraft on a regular basis. Like when I come home, when I came home today, he's like, "Let's play Minecraft." Like it's, it's that's what he wanted to do, and I'm so excited. That really, I mean, the game is boring as hell. Like let's let's be honest. Like it's super boring, and like although I did go back and play it by myself a couple nights ago by myself, and like after you went to sleep, and you know, I, I turned the level difficulty all the hard and started building my thing and. And it was all right, but it just it's very, very repetitive. But he really enjoys it. He enjoys playing it for about two minutes and then passing the controller over to somebody else who doesn't really want to play it. Right. Well, he, he enjoys watching it, watch, watches it, watching it being played. So he might be that might be something we could put on Twitch for him or something and let let him watch somebody build Minecraft stuff. That's way better. I think I can build a square room with uh some torches. I got fancy and we built our first ra- uh, train track railroad thing, minecart thing. We didn't get the minecart yet, but we've got the the track laid. So, <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. Um, so he's you know, I- I'm I'm really excited that he's uh, um enjoying the game. Like I really am. It's just one of those one of those games. I mean, like he was really big on the Need for Speed. Um, what was it Rivals? Need for Speed Rivals, I think, is the new one. I don't, or not the new one, the one for the th- Xbox One. He really enjoys that game. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, played a little bit of Magic Duels. Pop that back in for a brief thirty seconds. Well, um, and I can't, I, I can't say tell you how frustrated. I don't know. Did we talk about this last? We reviewed it last week or the week before, and. Like I went and we were having troubles with it saving games. Like, okay, and that's a huge issue. So like I went back and I was like, okay, so if it's not gonna save my progress in the story, like if it didn't save it, let me go back and play the last one that I that I have completed or that I haven't completed and see if it'll push me forward. So I went back to Kithian's story mode, played the first one, and all of a sudden beat it and nothing happens like jace doesn't unlock i'm like um okay so now i'm officially stuck like the game has got me stuck to where i can't proceed in the campaign so i can't get unlocked packs there or get coins or whatever um the multiplayer doesn't allow me to click on it like it just like it doesn't it's not lit up so i can't like select it it just tells me what multiplayer is where two people can play against each other yeah i know what that is it's 2015 um if you don't know what multiplayer is you might not want to jump into multiplayer just yet um and the only way i can get pat get coins is going through and playing the medium or easy guys uh the um computer based people the npcs so yeah, super super angry, and I lost all my cards that I unlocked through Jace's storyline. 
Like, it doesn't even know that I did any of that stuff. So, yeah. That's don't, rough. Don't buy that game. Ducky is enjoying it. She messaged me yesterday that she's been playing um, and creating decks. Um, although she had said that... Um, Ruben, I can't even think of what his gamer tag would be at this point. Executioner. Yeah, that's right. Uh, was trying to buy her some actual like cards with real money, some coins with real money. Oh, and I, no. I warned her, I said, don't do it because it's having trouble saving. He, unfortunately, unfortunately, or fortunately rather, um, the gl- the game was glitching and having trouble letting him purchase anything. And I told her that's probably a good that's thing. That's a good thing. Because it doesn't always save what you do, so don't spend any real money on this right. game. Right, right, yeah. I was, trust me, I was pretty upset when I unlocked... Um, uh, lang- a language card, one of the language cards, and I was like, "Oh yeah, sweet!" And I could start, and I started building out my black deck. Well, now my black deck, and what's really strange is, like, I went in to see because I had it in my black deck, and I was like, "What? I want to see what you know if that card's still in there because it's not in my collection." So I go in my col- in the collection, and it says I've got like one million copies of uh, Rogue's Passage. So. Uh, I don't understand how it gave me that many copies of Rogue's Passage because I'm only supposed to have one. And there's like another card that I have like a ton of different, you know, pack, um, copies of. And I just, I just don't, I don't get it. Like they, there's some serious issues that need to be fixed. Like serious issues. Um, let's see here. Um, so let's talk, so let's talk about some of our discussion points, uh, topics we need to go over. Uh, first thing, the um, the Xbox One is getting a dashboard update or UI update or whatever they're going to call it. And um, one of the things they talked about is they're going to be implementing Cortana from the Windows phones into the Xbox Live or Xbox dashboard. So like kind of like C- like Cortana is the Siri of the Windows phones. So like when you talk to your Xbox, the Xbox will talk back to you in Cortana's voice. That's not really the Cortana voice from Halo, right? It's supposed. I, I don't. I, th- I don't know if it is or not. It sounds a lot like her. It. I'm I've pers- seen it in the commercials, but I couldn't say. If, I mean, she sounded like a generic female, I would think. But anyway, so that's the that's one of the things that they're updating with the with the the next patch for the uh, update. I was just like, oh, that's so awesome! Like in the things that you can tell it to do, like you can tell they're really putting efforts into making the system like the actual voice chat or vo- not voice chat the uh voice recognition and voice commands a little bit um uh stronger and more recognizable like the things that they were telling him to do is they were he was telling him to telling cortana opens up friends list invite a, an individual to the party and and he was also sending messages through it and stuff like that. He was posting videos and things like that through it, like all hands free with just the controller or with the, just the uh, Cortana um, options. So I I think it's pretty sweet. Um, they show they showed there's a there's a couple of videos showing off the new UI. I'm not really impressed. Um, I've actually come to like the current setup. I know it can be better. Um, but uh, the the new one kind of reminds me of the cross media bar from the PlayStation Three, which I don't know if you're if you remember that or um, the what from the the, cr- the cross me- the cross media bar where it had like you know you had your icons across the one side so- like horizontal yeah, and then each and one the yeah all the drop down menu so like it kind of looks it kind of reminds me of that. There's also like a side menu bar that they've got that will open up and. You can this is what the new Xbox One dashboard is going to look like? Mm-hmm. It's not going to look like it does currently? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're changing things around quite a bit. Wow, that's a big change. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like when they went from the blade. Remember the blades from on the Xbox 360? That was a hard change, too. Yeah, that was a pretty... Which I, I've never really been super fond of the current Xbox One really? dashboard. I didn't care for it either at first, but I've come to kind of... Un- like understand how it works and and I guess that's not a good thing like I I can work within it it, sh- right, it should be kind of like be, intuitive right and it's it's not it's not super user friendly so um I mean hopefully they fix it and make it a better system but it's still going to be weird mm-hmm. when they make those big changes 
I don't know. And to be honest with you, like I'm perfectly happy with telling the Xbox, like because we have we have the Connect downstairs, and this thing works like a charm almost ninety nine percent of the time when you're trying to get it to do something. Um, even with like the Echo that we have downstairs, it still you know tends to work really well. So, is now the Xbox will talk back to me, so I'm perfectly fine with it. <laughs> um. Let's see here. Also, uh, let's see here. Crackdown 3. Uh, we've got some... It wasn't game... I don't think it was gameplay footage. I think it was more uh, CG. But the one thing that I'm excited about... Um, you played the first Crackdown, I think, for the Xbox 360. Oh, man. I I that was such a fun game. Like, those are the things with the orbs, and you had to collect all the orbs, and it let you jump higher or jump farther yeah, or run faster. I think I played it. It was like a first-party title, like, super cult classic. Like, it... It was one of those games where it was you, like kind of the shade or um, cell shaded. Yeah, it was a cell shaded game. Or something. Like, yep, you played yeah. against you. There was like three rival gangs or whatever, and you said, "Agent, you need, you know, you need to do yeah, this." I, I may have seen you do, watch or watched you do some of it, but I, didn't, I never played it. It, I mean, it was a really fun game. Um, I mean, it was very like it was supposed to be this huge open world, which it was, and part of the fun was trying to collect these orbs that were scattered all over the all over the city and some of them you couldn't get to unless you had a certain number because you couldn't jump that high or run that far or whatever the case may be um so i'm happy to see those are coming back but the other thing that's really sweet is it's 100 percent um the indes- uh, destructible environments so like every building can be brought down every you know and then once it hits the ground like it, they were they were saying that all the pieces stay in the world. So you can, you know, create cover by bringing down certain structures or whatever. And it's not like once it hits the ground and then, you know, you walk away and, you know, the computer's like, okay, he's not going to go back to that spot. It, you know, refreshes the memory and that building gets wiped out. No, it's there for good. So that, you know, that's kind of a, a pretty big thing. We haven't really seen anything quite like that. I mean, I know some of the, um, uh, what's the, uh, Battlefield games had de- uh, destructible, but you know you could bring down buildings and and stuff like that. Um, but I think this is going to be like a much bigger scale, much like next quote unquote next generation type of feel. So you know you package that in with the uh, the core game, and it sounds like they're going back to what Crackdown One was and stepping away from Crackdown Two a little bit, um, and going back to the the actual agent and the the gangs and stuff like that. So. Okay. I'm pretty excited. It looks like a good game. Um, Did you realize on our discussion topics you've got Cortana voice controls twice? You must be really excited about Cortana voice controls. I am so excited about Cortana <laughs> voice controls. You, 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 we're going to talk about it again, so I hope uh, you're okay. ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> um, let's see here. Destiny the Taken King. There was a... Um, which call it uh, an article up on Kotaku that posted yesterday or last night or today, um, kind of outlining some of the things. I think it was actually today, outlining some of the things that uh, that are going to change with this with the Taken King, and they really dove deep into uh, the level system and how you're gonna your light level isn't going to d- determine your actual character level anymore. Your light level is more or less like one of your attributes or one of your buffs kind of thing. So the higher light, the more damage you're going to deal, the more blah, blah, blah. Um, it's going to kind of be like the strength, agility, and um, discipline, I think, is the third one. Like one of those three attributes. And your actual level is going to be based on experience. So you'll be able to just get to level 40 by playing the game rather than depending on what your gear is. Which... For some people, is really neat. I know for some, I mean, for the people that can't get a raid together, a group to raid, you know, every Tuesday night when they re- refresh the raids, that's kind of exciting, right? Like, you and I can level to get, get to level 40 together. We don't have to worry about, like, okay, is there enough room in this party for us? Or, hey, I know you guys have ran through it already, but can you walk, can you take me through it? You know what I mean? Like, we can just play the game as, you know... Every, you know, we can do the daily, the weekly, the nightfall, and stuff like that. So, um, so I was pretty excited. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. Cool. 
I've not played Destiny in such a long time. I think we're gonna get. I think we'll, I think once the Taken King gets gets released, I think we'll probably get back into it pretty heavy handedly. Um, Hopefully, I, mean, I kind of miss playing like we did there for a while, but um, with getting the house on the market and doing other things, we just really haven't had a whole lot of time for playing games. Right. I gotcha. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think it kind of coincided too with my new job. Yeah. I've been going to bed at a more reasonable hour since I have to wake up in the early in the morning. Right. Okay, so let's talk about uh Quantum Break. Um so they released a new teaser video um on uh, xbox.com. Which part of this I think was initially talked about when the Xbox came out, right? right? This was supposed to be some kind of like TV show Which it still within is. a video game within a TV show kind of a thing. Right, it still is. There's they they're like stories that coincide like coexist but they're side by side. They don't I don't think they I don't think they interact with each other. And they're episodic. And they're epic yeah, episodic. Um but the game, you know, the the game has a pretty strong cast and the characters in the game like you'll see, like they've got some really not, like nice cutscenes, and it looks like um, it'll cross some. It'll have some crossover in the cutscenes um, from like the movie to the game, um, but they've got some really like like not A list characters or actors, but like kind of like the B list from some really awesome shows. So like, um, is it Dominique? Uh, Dominic. Dominic, uh, the guy that from played from in Lost, played Charlie in Lost. And then uh, Pippin from Lord of the Rings. Which, that would get me excited. However, <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> I knew you were going to say had, this. They, they also um, listed him as a cast member, or kind of a predominant cast member, in um, this horrible, horrible... What was that movie called? It was a TV it was show. A, it was a um, direct-to-Hulu show, I think is what it was. And he was in it for a whole two scenes i think but it was the very beginning of like every episode wasn't it like he was just like a narrator like he wasn't even in the actual show right i i don't even know it it was bad and i think it was only the first episode or something i don't know but they but they went advertising it you know had his picture because people they wanted people to think oh oh my god he's it's he's back like right we know he died and lost spoilers but He's back. <laughs> right. So that in and of itself would get me excited, except for that major, major letdown. Um, the one above him actually gets me pretty excited. I didn't notice that. Oh, Littlefinger. Yeah. Um, and then Lance Riddick, uh, Riddick was a, he had a small part in Lost as well. Um, he, he was one, in, he only did it for like three or four episodes, but he interacted with Locke quite a bit when Locke was in rehab or whatever. He, he was one of, um, uh, Mr. Widmore's, um, henchmen, but he Is was... this directed by J.J. Abrams or written by him or something? It's a lot of time, like other things that he's done also include. I'll let you look that up. So, yeah. okay. I will look that up. Or I can, um, I can look it up. No, that's all right. Um, like uh, Once Upon a Time, he does that, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of the same people. So um, It's very possible. And I think, didn't he just direct a movie that has Sawyer in it? It does sound, it sounds familiar. Um, I can't remember what that's called, though. Lost, Super, is it Super, is Super 8? No, that's that's an older movie. I I don't recall. He's, if doing, you type a, in he's qu- doing a portal. He's a producer for the movie Portal. Type in Quantum Ooh, Break. a Cloverfield sequel. No, God, no. Type in <laughs> type in Quantum Break in IMDb, and that should tell you who it, who's directing it. But I'm, I don't know. I, the The one thing that Remedy did, the last thing that I played from Remedy was, um, oh Jesus, Alan Wake. Which you watched me play that for the Xbox 360. It was the the writer gone mad type. You know, you got to scare away the shadows with your with your light, and used your you know shotgun and stuff like that, which kind of broke the whole story element of it. And I think um, this is more of like a you know a time is broken type of you know you you use time as a weapon. And I think this will fit their like creative style a little bit better. Um, there's definitely like a uh, army set, you know, quote unquote army insurgents or like, you know, military on the ground, boots on the ground type of thing where they're, you know, there's a lot of gunplay. So it's not like, you know, you're 
it's not like the so out of place like it was in Alan Wake. So now it'll feel a little bit like it's in there. Um, the other thing that it like watching it really reminded me of. Uh, um, uh, what's the is the PlayStation Four game? Um, shit, now I can't even remember what it's called. Oh boy. Oh, what's the one, dude? Like prototype. That's yeah, prototype. A prototype. Um, it reminds me a lot of prototype, where there's it's just so much, so quick. You know, uh, combat and there's a lot of gunplay. You know, it just it's one of those games where it's it's definitely it it gets me excited. Like it gets me really pumped up to see them do really good work. And when it flows, which it didn't in Alan Wake. You know, when you got to the gun levels, or when you know when you broke that. You know, I'm running through the forest looking for the next, you know, the next waypoint. When you broke that, you know, steady stream of narration, like with massive amounts of gunplay, just like, oh, this is terrible. So I think, you know, this is going to already have that feel. I just hope it doesn't, I hope it's not generic like, like Haze was, like super generic or Fracture was super generic as well. Um, but we'll see. I mean, but it's one of those things where, I was really excited about when they first announced it and then they didn't give us anything on it forever. Yeah. And then it's just all of a sudden it's back. So I'm thinking it's getting closer to being finished and closer to release. They're showing they're saying two thousand sixteen on right. this episode, so So it's getting close. I mean two thousand sixteen's right around the corner. But anyway. Yeah, anyway. Um what's coming up this Sunday? Other oh, than your birthday. The, uh, yeah, other than my birthday, um, Fear the Walking Dead comes out. Um, Ooh, yes. Which I'm... Okay. And I was never going to watch Walking Dead. I loathed it. You were only able to watch it after I'd fallen asleep and not while I was awake because I didn't want to hear the nasty sounds. Um, and then somehow, some way, um, I ended up liking it and watching it. I think it was probably the middle of season three season four um got caught up went you know got caught up with the current and now i'm excited for this to be coming out although i did just uh, see something on on the other day about how it may it it probably won't do well because they're just writing on the back of the other shows um did you see the trailer i i broke down i i wasn't gonna watch the trailer I watched some of them i i I didn't watch the trailer from the actual Walking Dead, but I broke down and watched the Fear of the Walking Dead, and they are starting at ground zero. Like they're yeah, starting. Yeah, they talk about patient zero. Um, it's some chick. I can't think of what her name is. Oh really? Yeah they they are starting like from the very beginning, and that's kind of and I and I hate to say I hate to hear that they feel like people are like critics are saying that they're going to ride on the coattails but I don't think that has anything to do with the coattails of what the well, series they think, was they think also that people are going to get bored because you already know the future events they really have to develop the characters I think if the characters are strong like they are in the original series I think you'll you'll want they're to gonna, see where it goes they're gonna have to be because i think that's what makes walking dead so popular is not necessarily i mean there are definitely people who like the gross out factor and all that and they, mm -hmm. they do keep um you know it's their special effects team really that does keep things new and fresh haha <laughs> fresh mm -hmm. um with what they're doing so people like it for that, but it can't be just about that. It's really, like you said, the characters, people really have to get invested in that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be hard because we're already so invested in other characters in that same world. Right. Um, I think it's going to be, they're going to, uh, I think it's going to be tough to, I mean, like, like you better call Saul, you know? <laughs> um, Which it got, it got pretty good reviews from critics. Like after, after the, the final episode, but I don't think I would call it like a smashing success. Is like, it coming back for a second season? I don't know if it is or not. Um, but you know, it, it, I know you were excited to watch it at first. You're like, yes, cause you love the breaking bad universe. You love the, the characters and you know, you liked the guy that played Saul. That was all very well and good and exciting, but watched two episodes of it. Never got back to it. Right. It, it just didn't catch you. And I think mm -hmm. this is going to, I think it's, I think it's, it's hard to live up to, when a show is that stellar in acting and storytelling and everything, mm -hmm. it's hard to make a sequel or 
prequel or whatever right. live up to that expectation. So I'm, I'm really hoping it's as good as we hope it will be. <laughs> but I, I, I just don't know. Yeah, and the th- I, I think I was, I think I'm more invested in the in the Walking Dead series. I'm more interested as to see where these characters, not these characters, but where like another portion of the of the city or another portion of the world, different set of characters. I, I'm more interested in that, and it's a different timeline. So if, you know, it's not like they're Although starting they are over. Catch up. I mean, they are going to be catching up and being running like in side the by same, side. Yeah, simultaneously. Which is fine, but this—I mean—to get you to get to get you off and running, like, hey, this is how it, this is how it started, you know, not, oh, hey, look, somebody woke up and everyone's dead, like, oh, great, we've heard the story already, we had that story six years or five years ago with the original Walking Dead, like, right. I don't want that. I don't know. Part of part of the other issue I see is if they're going to be doing a major time jump or something, is that you're losing part of that character development and seeing how far they've come, like, and how they got to be where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so are they going to be able to really get you invested in that if they do some kind they of... They might be able to spread time? it out over time, though. So it's not like, you know, they get to a certain point and then they skip forward, you know, three or four months. Maybe they skip forward, you know, every every episode is, yeah. you know, Which jumping Walking, forward. Walking Dead has had some time jumps, too. Um, right. Like when Lori was pregnant and things like that in the wintertime. I mean, there was... It wasn't... A super continuous cycle. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm. I. It's got me curious. You know. I'm really hoping the uh, the actual s- character stories are as strong. As, that's the one thing that'll break it for me. Is if the characters aren't strong, then it's just going to be like, okay, I can't wait for October 11th. Is that when the next one comes out? Of course, because it, this one's on my birthday, and then oh, one's that's, on Eli's that's birthday. Right. That's right. <laughs> They made it just for you guys. They really you should did. you should be excited and stoked. Okay. See, I told you it'd be a pretty short episode. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Not that I can think of. The insides of my eyelids are calling. Yeah. Yep, likewise. Okay. Cool beans. Um well I appreciate everybody watching. Um uh, you can Catch us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m., roughly, depending on... Well, we had Eli tonight, so that kind of put what a... Call of Duty is that poster for? Oh, Modern Warfare 3. Oh. I had to see which... <laughs> which poster? Oh. Um, so we'll be back next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, we can uh, visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash 72dpi online. Uh, that's, we're starting to use that as our kind of like archive... Uh, page since uh, Twitch doesn't keep episodes for longer than seven days, which is kind of, you know, obviously they got to keep, you know, keep things fresh and keep things uh, open. Um, we have our rescheduled episode one for Managing tomorrow night um, because I was sick yesterday and could not get out of bed. And so, yeah, so there's that. So um, Magic Vice will be joining me tomorrow at 8 p.m. for Managing totally stoked about that we got a tournament uh coming up not this weekend but next weekend uh up in columbus so we're going to be testing for that uh but anyway we'll be back next wednesday at 8 p.m thanks for watching guys good night